Hi everyone, this is Khalid from GNS3 Talk and in this short video I'll show you how you can connect your GNS3 routers to the internet on Mac or OS X. Um, I'm going to bring up the uh, GNS3 first and I'm going to bring the 3660 router into the topology. I'm also going to use the uh, cloud in this case. And if I double click on the cloud and choose C1, then we need to choose the NIO Ethernet, which is a network uh, input output Ethernet. We'll end up with this list of interfaces, which we don't really know which one belongs to which. So before we go ahead and uh, and uh, choose uh, which interface that we need to uh, to choose, uh, we need to find out which interface we're actually connected to. All right. So I'm, go I'm what I'm going to do first now is identify uh, which interface uh, that I need to use uh, for my topologies. Just keep in mind, this is very important, keep in mind that you cannot use your wireless interface to connect your to your uh, GNS3 uh, routers. So what I'm going to do now here is, as you may see, I'm, I have my MacBook Pro connected to, to, to the same network via two different interfaces. You could see that um, uh, it's the same 10.0.0.7 and Ethernet is 10.0.0.9. So both interfaces connected to the same router, uh, which is my ADSL router. I'm going to do now is disable my Wi-Fi connection which makes life a lot easier if I wanted to find out which interface uh, that I could use on my GNS3 topology. So you can see that the Ethernet interface uh, is currently connected and it's got the IP address 10.0.0.9 so I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to bring up terminal which is hidden here somewhere. Alright so the command similar to Linux is if config And you could see uh, the interface configuration has come up with these results. As you may know, uh, the, we are connected to the uh, Ethernet 10.0.0.9, and we need to check out one of these interfaces. I'm pretty sure it's EN0 or EN1. You can see EN0 or interface 0, it says it's active, and you can see that the IP address of it is 10.0.0.9, which is exactly similar to the IP address of uh, the network interface card here. EN1 looks like is my uh, wireless uh, connection or ne wireless network interface card uh, and it's an inactive because I disabled it. So if I go enable it and go if config it will be enabled. I'm not really interested in using the wireless um, one at this stage. As I said before, uh, there's a lot of issues when you use uh, your wireless connect uh, network interface card. The reason is because if you are connected into your um, uh, wireless access point uh, via some sort of a security measures, then obviously the Cisco router in GNS3 won't be able to connect to it. So uh, the whole point is use your wired uh, network interface port to connect to your GNS3 routers, which is EN0 in this case. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this as well. Bring up GNS3 again, double click on C1 and choose EN, ah, EN, which one was it? EN0. So go EN0 and go add and go on OK. Now, if I need to bring up the uh, connect the router one slash Ethernet uh, zero slash zero into the C1 and choose EN0, you'll end up with this message saying unable to create generic Ethernet uh, NIO. This is similar to Linux. The reason being is that GNS3 is currently running in um, a user access mode. So uh, we need to run GNS3 in this case in a root access mode. I, um, so the best thing to do now is go back to terminal. I'm going to clear this off. And I'm going to go sudo applications. Let me just put them, make it a bit wider. And go GNS3 contents. I think Mac OS 10 or Mac OS and then GNS3. So this command or this line of commands should launch GNS3 in root access mode. So I'm going to go press enter. I need to key in my password. And I'll just wait for GNS3 to launch in root access mode. Now, it looks like that it has. So I'm going to go cancel it. Go 3660 again. Choose the cloud again. Okay, first of all, I need to configure the cloud. 
So double click on it or right click the config. Uh, EN0. Okay. Choose the same interface card and voila. You could see that we did not uh, end up with this uh, with the with the message that uh, said that unable to connect to the network uh, interface um, input or output uh, interface card. All right. So what I'm going to do now uh, is first of all before I go ahead and explain uh, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I need to show uh, to tell you that the uh, other end of the network interface card is basically connected to a switch, which is in turn connected to my uh, ADSR router. So the ADSR router is assigning IP addresses automatically. So uh, I'm pretty sure the router one in this case will be uh, assigned an IP address from my ADSL router. So I'm going to configure the interface of this particular router to be just a uh, an, an interface that accepts DHCP from a remote uh, router. All right, so I'm going to go launch it. Just wait for it to start, then double click on it. And you can see it's starting already. There you go. So you could draw. You can see router one. If I go show one, you could see it uh, doesn't have any configurations. Just the standard configurations. All right. So the only thing I'm going to do is, as as I said before, is access this interface, which is fast Ethernet zero slash zero, and I'm then I'm going to assign it a uh, uh, turn it up, and then assign an IP address via DHCP, and then we'll wait my ATSR router to assign the IP address automatically. So I'll go config t. Interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero, no shut, which brings this uh, interface up, and then gonna go IP address DHCP. Okay, let me IP address DHCP. So this tells the interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero slash zero to uh, to uh, to send a discovery message into uh, the network interface. Uh, the the my DSR router is connected to. And asking for a uh, for an IP address, so yep, I'm gonna press on enter or click, and we'll just wait for remote server or the remote ADSR router to assign the IP address. Just be patient in these cases; uh, it would work. There you go. You could see that an IP address of 10.0.0.19 was assigned into my uh, uh, virtual router. So my virtual router is basically bypassing the interface, which is a physical interface of my laptop, and going straight away into the ADSL router. Now, uh, let's see if we could ping Google. I'm not really using a Mac uh, keyboard, so keys are different. All right, so if I go ping Google, you'll end up with this message saying unrecognized hosts or address or protocol not running. Uh, the reason is uh, Cisco IOS is usually uh, come with IP domain lookup uh, disabled. So config t IP domain lookup, you just need to enable this. And go back again, control Z or Z. And I'm going to go ping google.com there you and you could see that my router is actually uh, trying to reach Google via DNS server 10.0.0.1 the 10.0.0.1 if you have noticed is actually the IP address of my ADSL router which is acting as a DNS server as well so you can see 10.0.0.1 which is a DHCP server and is also the DNS server so uh, you could see that the ping has is successful and it's actually 100% uh, ping another thing, another website, which is Facebook in this case, and you can see that the ping percent is 100%. This is fairly straightforward. The only problem is you need to access your GNS3 uh, via the command line interface and using the sudo, which is this. Unfortunately, I haven't found out a way of how to do it uh, via just one single click. I tried uh, Apple script and it wasn't it was a successful please if you have any ideas of how you can do that please uh, post your 
uh, that on my YouTube channel, uh, your help and feedback would be uh, very much appreciated. I would like to uh, thank you for watching this video and please leave your comments on my channel and thank you for watching.